In our last lesson, we learned about the elements of art, which we compare to the alphabet or building blocks an artist uses to create. In this video, we'll learn about the principles of design, which suggest ways an artist can use the elements most effectively. Balance refers to the visual equalization of elements in a work of art. Diego Rivera's painting on the left uses symmetrical balance. You can draw a vertical line of symmetry down the center and the two sides are very similar. Notice they are not perfectly alike. While a perfectly symmetrical artwork would also have symmetrical balance, a piece like this, which is nearly symmetrical, is also considered to have symmetrical or formal balance. Hokusai's print, The Great Wave, on the right uses asymmetrical balance. The two sides of the composition are significantly different, but they remain visually equal. The smaller shapes of the mountain and the boats balance out the large wave on the other side of the painting. An asymmetrical composition like this can have a great deal of movement while still being pleasing to the eye. Asymmetrical balance is often something you just feel. If you've ever worked on a drawing or painting that didn't seem quite right and you couldn't figure out why, a lack of balance may have been to blame. Radial balance is a third kind of balance. These early photographs of snowflakes by Wilson Bentley are examples. Compositions with radial balance are based on a circle. The features of the design radiate out from a central point. Not all circular designs are radial, however. A design with radial balance will have multiple lines of symmetry. You can divide them vertically, horizontally, and sometimes even diagonally as well. The halves on either side of the lines are always mirrors of one another. Other common examples of radial balance are flowers and wheels. Unity is a sense of oneness or a feeling that everything fits together, often created by the use of repeating colors, values, shapes, or types of lines. What repeated elements does Monet use here to create a sense of unity in his painting Haystacks? Variety describes a composition which uses differences in elements to create interest. How does Kandinsky use variety in Composition 6? A good composition will use both variety and unity to catch a viewer's attention and please the eye. Contrast is a strong difference between elements that are next to each other in a composition, often used to create emphasis. This can be a tricky definition when compared to variety, so make sure to read each definition carefully when we have our quiz later on. When I think about contrast, I think of black and white compositions like these prints by M.C. Escher. White and black are opposites, and the stark contrast in value Escher uses gives these pieces a strong sense of contrast. Emphasis. Emphasis creates a center of interest by placing greater attention on certain areas of the work. You might call those specific areas focal points. What part of this painting by Goya grabs your eye first? Why? Do you see any other focal points? Movement. This is arranging elements in such a way that they suggest movement or lead your eye through the design. These two pieces use movement in different ways. In the painting on the left, Caravaggio uses an effect known as chiaroscuro, a strong contrast in light and dark areas, to move the viewer's eye around the painting. We might notice the figure at the center first. Then follow the lines of light around the painting. Like so. 
In the sculpture on the right, the figure's pose suggests motion, and the use of diagonal lines in the limbs and the folds of cloth enhances that sense of movement. Repetition, a specific element or combination of elements used more than once in a composition. Andy Warhol uses repetition with his exact repetition of Campbell's soup cans. McGree also uses repetition, but each figure is a slightly different size and turns a different direction. Exact repetition of elements is called pattern and is often used in decorative contexts like fabric. The woman in Alice Neal's painting, Marisol, is wearing a patterned sweater. Rhythm. Rhythm is a term we are familiar with in music, but sometimes have a hard time pinning down in visual art. It combines repeated elements with a sense of movement. Think of rhythm as the element that makes your eyes dance across a painting like Van Gogh's Starry Night. Gradation, a gradual change in elements. You can see George O'Keefe using gradation of value in the landscape in the center of this slide. You can see the value change from dark to light as it moves across the adobe surfaces at different points in the painting. In her flower painting on the right, she also uses gradation. Here she uses both a gradation of value and a gradation of color as in this area of the painting where she blends the hues smoothly from yellow to orange to red. Proportion. Both proportion and scale compare relative size. Proportion refers to two parts of a whole, such as the parts of a body in a figure painting. If you've ever had your caricature drawn or watched Peanuts, you have seen artwork that plays with proportion. The caricature artist gives their subject a huge head and a tiny body, just like Charlie Brown and the rest of the Peanuts gang. Renaissance artists, on the other hand, are known for their use of perfect proportions in the human body. Scale. Scale refers to the size of one object in relation to another within an artwork, or to the size of the artwork in relation to the viewer. When we look at Michelangelo's Pietà on the left, at first we see what appears to be a completely realistic depiction of two figures. But look a little bit closer. Mary cradles her full-grown son in her lap. Typically, an adult man would be much bigger than his mother, but here, Mary is larger than her son. Michelangelo has consciously made that choice to change the scale of the two figures in order to create his desired artistic effect. In the photograph on the right, we see Monet in the act of painting one of his most famous series, Water Lilies. We can see in this photograph that the paintings are larger than an average size person. Figure ground relationship. This is the relationship between the subject of a composition and the surrounding space. This large-scale, wall-sized, paper-cut mural by contemporary artist Kara Walker emphasizes the relationship between positive space, the black paper figures, trees, and land, and the negative space, the plain white background. To create an interesting composition, an artist must create interesting shapes in the negative space as well as the positive space. Throughout this class, as you learn about drawing and design, you can refer back to these principles of design to create the most effective compositions you are able to.